So like Asta said, uh, she said something about being a, kind of an odd bird in this lab, and I'm, I'm definitely in that category as well. Uh, the reason is uh, I don't study machines, I don't study uh, algorithms, I study people. Uh, everything I'm going to tell you about today was joint work with Mary Gray. She's another researcher in Microsoft Research New England. Uh, we recently wrote a book. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. That's the cover. It's called Ghost Work. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit about it today. So uh, Mary is an anthropologist. Uh, for those of you that don't know what that means, that means she studies people, like I do. Uh, but I'm a computer scientist. And the questions we wanted to answer in this book are, who are the crowd workers? Why do they do crowd work? And what are the pros and cons to them? And in any crowdsourcing site, you know, there's a requester who puts the task on the platform. There's the platform, and then there's the crowd. And the crowd looks like a black box. They're behind the API. You can't really see them. You can't really get to them. They look, well, invisible. So what Mary did was she circumvented this API and met these workers face to face, interviewed them in their living rooms, at cafes, around the world, in, in India and the United States. And I'm a computer scientist. This, just, this makes me nervous just thinking about it, right? Like, I don't even, like, wow, I'm scared right now. Anyway, <laughs> so she did that about 200 times. She interviewed about 200 people. And what, she had this great uh, interview data. Uh, it's very rich stuff. And so what I would do is I would be a requester on one of these platforms, and I would put up uh, a task that would measure her findings on a larger scale. And we're going to see an example of that in a few minutes. And the general idea was to open the black box of the crowd. Uh, just to give you guys a sense of what we did, we did almost two years of field work where Mary and her team were uh, you know, interviewing people around India and the United States, about 200 interviews. Uh, about 2,000 surveys, about dozens of behavioral experiments with thousands of respondents each. And I'm going to tell you about some of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to give you an example of some of this in the next uh, few slides. So I'm going to tell you about how we took some interview data and then measured it at a bigger scale. Uh, so I'm going to give you a few quotes, two quotes from uh, Mary's interviews. So Mary interviewed Sanjeev. He was a 22-year-old student. And she, met, she interviewed him with, along with his college buddy. And he said, if I'm working on a hit, a task on Mechanical Turk, it's a popular crowdsourcing site, is called a hit. If I'm working and I find a good hit, then I call him and I tell him about it. And then Farid was a devout Muslim in his late 20s. Uh, he lived in Hyderabad. He said, anyone who sees work posted and calls and tells everyone. There's no fixed timing. Whosoever is alert sees and informs everyone. And in this way, everyone helps everyone else. And he's talking about 150 friends on Facebook. So what's going on here? In both of these quotes, one person found a good job to do on Mechanical Turk, called their friends to let them know about it. So the workers are talking, they're communicating, and they're collaborating. So right here, already, you know, this notion of crowd, when I think of crowd, I think of like independent individuals. That notion's kind of broken, right? They're talking, there's a network there. So we wanted to scale this finding up and see how do we map this network. So what we did, um, in a very one-sentence description is we built a Facebook Lite kind of app for Mechanical Turk workers to use where they could <coughs> anonymously report who they talked to. And uh, we paid them to use it. And um, I, I, I'll, go, I'll, I'll save the details for later. And we basically ran this experiment for about two weeks where workers could, again, anonymously report who they talked to. We got 10,000 respondents. Um, and later work showed that that was roughly a census of all the workers you could possibly hope to get in, in about a two-week period. And we got 1,300 workers added at least one edge between them. And this is what uh, the graph, the network looked like. And if I was sitting in the audience, I'd be like, Sid, what the hell? 87% of people were completely isolated, and only 13% had an edge incidence in the army. What, what are you talking about? Well, what's going on here is that network of 1,300 uh, workers those are the quote unquote super turkers. If you put a task on Mechanical Turk, they're the ones that you're most likely to get. Okay? They're the 20% that do 80% of the work. So it might look like a very sparse network. It's actually not. And then if also I was sitting in the audience, I would say, hey, this network, it looks like there's some clusters in there. What's going on with that? It turns, what I've done here is I've colored the edges according to which online forum the workers talk on. And um, you know, the magenta at the top is Reddit. The red in the bottom right is mTurk grind. The orange in the bottom left is Turker nation, and so on and so forth. So the workers, um, so 90% of all the edges were between uh, workers uh, who communicate on one of these online forums. So right here, you can see what we did. 
We had this interview data. Workers talk, they communicate, they collaborate. Here, we scaled it up. Now, how, how widespread is it? And then um, we also did further studies about what, what do they talk about, uh, what media do they use, et cetera, et cetera. So there's two takeaways I'd like you to take from my short presentation. Uh, crowdsourcing is less like the top picture. It's less like sampling from a pool of independent, identical workers, and it's more like sampling from a network. And that's the first takeaway I'd like you to make, uh, take. And the second takeaway is there are people here that study people. I am one of them. Uh, Divine is a former intern of mine. Um, if you want to know what it's like to work with me, you can talk to him. And um, if you're interested in any of this, send me an email. Unfortunately, I won't be around for lunch. Thank you. <laughs>